Um, welcome back, Musings on Monday. My name is Elizabeth Manikin. I am the head of university programs and academic projects at the Ackland Art Museum at UNC Chapel Hill. I am joined by my co-host and colleague, Allison portnell Lathrop, who is our head of public programs. And today we have three distinguished colleagues who we will get to in a minute. So for those of you new to Musings, it is a deck of cards that we created at the museum to prompt conversations about the role of museums, the capacity of art to make us think critically about ourselves and the world around us. And what better crew than um, people who love museums in the first place. Allison, you wanna introduce our guests? Sure, so today we have Carolyn Albendinger with us, who is the Director of Education and Interpretation at the Ackland. We have Andrew Parrish, the Assistant Director of Development, and Lauren Turner, the Assistant Curator for the Collection. So welcome everyone, it's nice to have you with us. Thank you, Glad <laughs> good to be here. here. Great, um, so I have the honor of reading our musing prompt for today and I'll read it and then we'll get to chatting about it. So, a utopia is an imagined place or state of things in which everything is perfect. Museum scholars write about art museums as kinds of utopias, beautiful, well-ordered microcosms of the world. What would you add, take away, or alter to make this museum, the Ackland, more utopian? So, who seems ready to kick us off? I think Andrew, would you like to start the conversation? <laughs> sure, let, let me go first before the two museum scholars behind me. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll thoroughly embarrass myself first. Uh, so uh, yeah, when I, when I hear this question, I, I mean, my, my mind actually went first to two uh, literary figures of the 20th century that have actually had a pretty influential um, bent on my life and kind of their views on utopia. Uh, one was J.R. Tolkien and uh, J.R. Tolkien, uh, he once wrote uh, that an idea of a utopia uh, was something that made the sad things uh, untrue. And he actually wrote this in his Lord of the Rings trilogy, a uh, conversation between uh, Samwise Gamgee and uh, Gandalf. And his fellow literary companion, uh, C.S. Lewis, um, he once said that uh, some mortal say of uh, some temporal suffering, uh, no future bliss can make up for it, uh, not knowing that once attained, uh, it will work backwards and turn even that agony uh, into a glory. And so I then thought, well, how would that tie into art? How would that tie into the Ackland? And, my thought was if we're just removing all constraints uh, and we're just, this is a utopian exercise uh, in which I have infinite powers, uh, I thought that, well, if I had the capacity uh, that I would bring every human being's life to the point of perfection and then show them the artwork of their life uh, that displays the personal story of their transformation of agony into glory and how, how utopian would that be uh, to actually have each and every person in the world step into the Acklin and actually see their own exhibition uh, of their own life story and to see uh, their life uh, made perfect and to all the travails, all the, all the sufferings, all, all, the, all the moments um, that were bitter and to see them actually become uh, the sweetest part of their life. Thank you. That's fascinating. Yeah, I love the sort of individualized sort of tailoring to that too, of course, because if you think, I mean, we're about to get other perspectives on utopias, but I imagine if you were to ask 10 people this question, you'd get 10 different answers. So that um, in that imagined space to be able to make the experience and to make it what, what resonates with you and how you see your own experience in the world um, and overcoming that. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's really beautiful. Who, want, who wants to go next? Jump in. All right, Lauren, yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I confess I was coming at this from a sort of nuts and bolts perspective, and I would say that my answer probably is applicable to all museums, but I 
tried to think about sort of what the differences between utopia and dystopia are other than good bad and a lot of times it seems to be resources or lack of resources and i think for the Ackland and for most museums a lot of the criticisms i hear leveled in the museum field could be alleviated just by increased resources like i think it's definitely true that we need to bring in a lot more um, artists into the collection of different voices and that can be anything in terms of experience to local versus international to um, even like different age experiences um, so that in addition to the fact that if you bring those voices in then you need to have the space to store them you need to have the staff to actually bring those works out to see to show them to visitors you need to have the space in the building to put them on display and then especially when you're thinking in terms of not just art but the like very active life we have in the museum for discussions and programs and things like that a lot of times you need to really have a sort of consideration of equity in terms of people's time and attention so if you're asking people of all walks of life to come and talk and share about their art to the museum it's important that you're actually compensating them for their time so in terms of just sort of what i hear about how museums can become more inclusive of what andrew's describing of sort of this like um, ability to mirror just sort of infinite numbers of perspectives having the resources to do that is key I think there's already the will within especially the Ackland and other museums it's just a matter of sometimes we only have so much we can do and figuring out what rises to the top is a problem yeah absolutely Looking at you, Carolyn. All right. <laughs> so from, from, the, <laughs> from, from the literary to the literal, uh, in my answer, from the lofty to um, the, uh, the uh, quotidian, I don't know. The, uh, <laughs> um, what I was thinking about, I was thinking, uh, I was thinking specifically about the Ackland, and I was thinking um, about um, great experiences um, uh, that I've that I've had that I've been able to be part of um, in the museum and um, uh, one of my favorite things one of my favorite experiences um, in the Ackland is conversations um, with groups of people about works of art um, and um, I think that uh, works of art are, um, are amazing um, starting points for a whole variety of really interesting and important conversations. Um, and in my years of teaching, I've been fortunate enough to have a lot of really interesting, really thought-provoking um, uh, conversations about art with different groups of people. And um, it's one of the things that um, that really keeps uh, keeps me interest keeps me personally um, interested in what I do. Every time I talk about or talk talk about talk with uh, a group of people um, about a work of art, I see something different. You know, I see something different in the work of art. Something I've never noticed before. It doesn't matter how many times uh, I've. I've, I've looked at it, how much time I've spent looking at it. I always see something new and there's always a new perspective that comes out of those conversations. And so um, I think that one of the things that, that would make the Ackland um, more utopian for me is um, uh, more spaces um, for more kinds of art um, to be on view and, and installed in such a way that um, that groups of, uh, of various sizes can gather around where everyone can see them well and um, it's an environment that lends itself to um, a really meaty conversation um, uh, about uh, about the work of art and about all the ideas that that emanate um, from the work of art and from the conversation about it. Um, so it's I, I just think those experiences um, are really wonderful and I would really like for as many people as possible to have them. Yeah, 
I think it's so interesting too to think about both the, both your answer, Carolyn, and Lauren's answer. Thinking about um, like the the mechanics and the, the the ways in which we can create that physical space and the ways in which we can welcome in different you know like openings and the part of the definition right this well ordered microcosm like how do we shift the structure of that microcosm so that we can allow for these transform transformative experiences and i think that um building that groundwork and the creation of that kind of space is so um integral of course to those processes that we want to like then build on um, Absolutely. Like for me and thinking about those structures, one of the things I love about museums and particularly university museums is in some ways you can illuminate the structures in the world that are sometimes otherwise invisible. And it makes it a really powerful way of teaching um, not only about the art and having really important conversations right in front of the art, talking about the art, but how is it organized? Why is it organized? How are these um, fields of knowledge organized and all of those things. So for me, that's a really exciting exercise too. Allison, do you want to weigh in or should we let our studio audience? <laughs> well, the only thing I was going to add thinking about what Carolyn just said about the physical spaces and Lauren and Andrew too, about like how, how you as a visitor interact is for me, I love having, of course, as the programs person, I love having those experiences where we can connect other arts with the art on view. So whether it's a musical performance or a film that in a space where I would like we are where I am virtually in our art and space where we get to have those sorts of um, either um, acrostic um, artistic connections go on so that people who come from like a musical background like I do or people who are film lovers or people who are theater lovers can walk into the museum and have these transformative experiences through another art form and get to know our collection that way. So it, I didn't think about it as part of my utopian dream of the Ashland to have a, a space like uh, the virtual version of the one behind me. Um, but it, it really is now that I think about it. So. Absolutely. Glad we were, we're talking with all of you about this today. <laughs> Absolutely. And for those of you at home, um, please join the conversation. Let us know what you think could make the museum more utopian. What would you add, take away, change? Let us know. See you next Monday.